I've been reading all of your comments regarding this lock die. Considering that there aren't that many cheap options out there, I decided to design and make my own customizable version, and after seeing it perform quite well, I would like to share the concept with you. My die consists of four parts, main body, base with the tip, punch and an ejector pin. All of these parts can be machined or manufactured by most machine shops. Link to step files of all of these plus suggestions for material choices and surface treatment is in the description. While I was testing I ordered all of these parts from PCBWay, but if you're looking for the cheapest option, then the only parts you actually need to be manufactured is the main body and perhaps the base. Alternatively, the base can also be replaced with a 2mm pin secured in a vise at the desired length. This is less flexible than having a proper base though. So this particular die was designed for Huben GK1 in 22 caliber, since the gun requires very wide slugs that are quite rare. During my testing, both flat base and skirted slugs performed equally well. To give you an idea of what it costs to order these from PCBWay, here's what I paid for the three main parts, shipping and taxes excluded. Fortunately, several of these can be ordered from cheaper sources and adapted for this project as long as you have the main body. A suitable rod that replaces the piston only costs a few dollars on AliExpress, and the same goes for the ejector pin. I'll include the links to both. If you want to go even cheaper, you can use long drill bits of suitable size. In this case, 5.6mm for the punch and 1.9mm for the ejector pin, combined with 1 in 2mm for the hollow point itself. The fun part is that if you have a press drill or even a hand drill and a file, then you can experiment with your own shapes of the tail if you don't want it to be flat. Here I'm spinning the drill bit for the punch at 1200 rpm and cutting it slowly with the file to create a groove which will in turn form a cup tail in the lead. Using this die is very simple. If you go for the body and base option then you start by combining these and dropping in a lead piece that is 5.5 mm or smaller. The weight of the piece will determine the weight and length of the final slug. You can go as low as 18 grain. Maximum weight will depend on whether we make the base flat or cupped. To compress the lead I use a hammer and strike the punch a few times till I feel no movement. It's important to perform this on a firm and hard surface like thick metal, concrete, heavy duty vise or similar. After making a few slugs it's easy to figure out when the slug is properly formed. If you have a press capable of a few tons then you can use that instead of the hammer. When the slug is formed the base is removed and an ejector pin is inserted and the final slug is pushed out. Depending on the precision of your die, base and piston there may be some flashing. This can be polished on a coarse cloth. Ideally all of the parts of the mold should fit firmly but without binding. This will give the best results without flashing. This slug was made using the machined punch that I ordered from PCBWay, while this one was made with the flat rod that I got from AliExpress. Here's a little bonus, if you would like to make a metal piercing slug then you can drop in a copper ball first, in this case a 3mm one, and proceed with the rest. For this you don't need the base at all, in fact the tip of the base would get damaged if it was installed. Same ejector pin is used here. I'm sure that other tips are possible as well, but I would recommend to use copper and similar softer metals to avoid damaging the internals of your die. As mentioned earlier, this particular die is designed specifically for the GK1 in 22 caliber. But if you would like me to make versions for other calibers, then leave a comment and a like and I'll see what I can do. Hope you found this useful and until next time.